Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, families of the fallen. We've gathered today to honor those who have made the supreme sacrifice by laying down their lives for others. We would also like to honor those that have passed on, leaving a legacy of courage, serving our communities as firefighters. May they always be loved and never forgotten. Distinguished invités, mesdames et messieurs, ainsi que les familles de nos pompiers qui sont décédés en devoir. Nous sommes réunis aujourd'hui afin de rendre hommage à ceux qui ont fait le sacrifice suprême en donnant leur vie. Nous aimerions aussi mettre en honneur ceux qui sont décédés et qui ont transmis leur courage en servant leur communauté comme pompiers. Gardons toujours une bonne pensée pour eux. Welcome to our 22nd annual memorial service. Would you please Bienvenue à la 22e édition de notre service commémoratif. Stand for the national anthem. S'il vous plaît, vous levez pour l'hymne national. Au Canada. Now call upon the Reverend John Bridges, Ottawa Fire Service Chaplain, to open in prayer, please. Nous invitons le moignier du service des Saints Sentiers d'Ottawa, John Bridges, pour la prière d'ouverture. You are welcome to be seated. God is known by many names and in different traditions. I ask that the divine will be present with us today so that the gift of memory may challenge us, comfort us, and empower us. We thank God for the gift of memory. Amen. I now like to call upon our Mayor, Mark Sutcliffe. J'inviterai le Mayor Sutcliffe à s'amasser pour dire quelques mots. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde. C'est vraiment, vraiment un honneur d'être ici euh, au nom du conseil municipal, mes collègues du conseil municipal et tous les résidents d'Ottawa euh, pour cette euh, cérémonie euh, commémorative. Uh, thank you and uh, good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining us today for this very special ceremony. I want to recognize my colleagues from Ottawa City Council who are here today as well as our General Manager for Emergency and Protective Services, Kim Ayotte, Chief Paul Hutt from the Ottawa Fire Service, uh, Reverend John Bridges, and uh, Jenna McMillan, who is the Vice President of the Ottawa Professional Firefighters Association. Today we have an important duty, a responsibility, an obligation to recognize the people who have made the ultimate sacrifice to wear the uniform of Ottawa Fire Services and to ensure that they are not forgotten. When you think of a firefighter, many words may come to mind to describe what they do. Courage, selflessness, leadership, teamwork. But the word that comes to mind for me most of all is hero. Firefighters everywhere are heroes in every sense of the word. Think of the heroic efforts that have happened this year to fight the wildfires throughout our country. The sacrifices that firefighters make 
every single day are matched by very few people in our community. And I want to salute all of the firefighters who are present here today, who serve us day in and day out. And I want to recognize their families as well, many of whom are represented here today. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your service. Thank you for supporting our firefighters. To the firefighters, your presence and professionalism bring calmness and relief to residents across the city during some of their most stressful times. Alors nous rendons hommage aujourd'hui à un certain nombre d'héroïnes et des héros méconnus d'Ottawa, des personnes qui ont payé le prix ultime au sein du service des incendies d'Ottawa. We give our thanks to them. We give our thanks to you, their families, and their loved ones for your collective sacrifice and service. Thank you all for joining us here today for this very important cer ceremony. Merci beaucoup. I now would like to call upon Kim Ayat, General Manager, Emergency and Protective Services. Director General, Service de Protection et d'Urgence, Kim Ayat. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to the Ottawa Firefighters Community Foundation for inviting me to speak here today. As General Manager of Emergency and Protective Services, I see firsthand the dedication and professionalism of our first responders and emergency services. Today we gather to honor the sacrifice, bravery, and unwavering dedication of our fallen firefighters. Nous nous rassemblons aujourd'hui pour rendre hommage aux pompiers décédés et pour saluer leur sacrifice, leur courage et leur dévouement. These courageous individuals heeded the call of duty and put their lives on the line to protect the city and its residents. This memorial is a tribute to their bravery and services as a reminder of the inherent dangers that our firefighters face every day. But today is not only about the sorrow and remembrance, it's also about celebrating the lives of those remarkable individuals. Aujourd'hui, nous tenons aussi à, la cé à célébrer la vie de ces pompiers. It's about cherishing the memories they left behind and the impact they had on our community. They were not just firefighters. They were beloved family members, friends, and mentors. They made our city safer day in and day out. May their sacrifice continue to inspire us to work towards a better future, a future in which we can carry their bravery and selflessness within our hearts. Je souhaite que leur sacrifice continue et que nous incitez à travailler pour améliorer l'avenir. This memorial also pays tribute to the families who stand alongside every firefighter in our community. Everyone within the firefighter family understands the dedication of all members of their families. Some of these families have joined us here today. Our thoughts and prayers are with you today and always. Nos pensées et nos prions sont pour vous, aujourd'hui et toujours. As part of the firefighter community, you are all united by an unbreakable bond. In closing, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to the Ottawa Firefighters Community Foundation for hosting this event. Today we stand united in our appreciation, respect, love for all of those and what they've given us. Ensemble, nous sommes réunis pour témoigner notre reconnaissance, notre respect et notre amour à ceux qui ont tout sacrifié. Sacrifié. Let us remember our fallen firefighters, cherish their memories, and honor their legacy. Thank you. I'd like to call upon Paul Hutt, Fire Chief of the Ottawa Fire Services. Chef de service des incendies d'Ottawa, Paul Hutt. Thank you, uh, Dawson. Thanks, David. Firefighters, families, friends of the fallen, honored guests. As Fire Chief, I must deal with a lot of tough things. 
but one of the rewards is having the opportunity to personally meet with so many courageous firefighters who risk their lives every day for the safety and security of our residents. And I also get to meet all their loved ones. I want to acknowledge the Ottawa Firefighters Foundation executive team for their passion and endless passion for celebrating these memories of both career and volunteer firefighters who have served this calling and now have been called to their rest. The citizens and visitors of Ottawa need this somber occasion to pause and remember and to reflect what it takes and what has been given to us who we remember today to keep us safe in our homes and communities in this vibrant city we have. Sadly, the inherent dangers of work firefighters do mean some of us won't make it home after a shift or are taken from us way too soon. And that's why we gather today to hear, to remember the sacrifice and to share in the grief and the pride of the families and the friends. The names engraved here bring honour to their families, the Ottawa Fire Service and the City of Ottawa. In closing, I want to share a poem with you that I truly believe represents what this memorial is all about. It's called, Speak Their Name. Someone I loved has gone away, and life is not the same. The greatest gift that you can give is just to speak their name. I need to hear the stories and the tales of days gone past. I need to understand these memories must last. We can't make more of our memories since they're no longer here. So when you speak their name to me, it's music to my ear. I'd like to call upon Gina McMillan, Vice President of the Ottawa Fire Professional Services Association. Vice President of the Association des Pompiers Professionnels d'Ottawa, Jenna McMillan. Good afternoon, families, friends, brothers and sisters, and honored guests. It's often said that once you're a firefighter, you're always a firefighter and that we, as a profession, possess a special bond and a connection that can only be cultivated in the firehouse and forged in the blazes that we quench. It's a bond that only the lucky few, those who take an oath to protect strangers and friends alike, will ever get to experience. If you're a family member or a friend of a firefighter, you know that it is almost impossible to go for a drive with one of them in this city without hearing these words. I had a fire in that building and then hearing a grand story of the call. The same comments and stories can be heard when we are all gathered together in the station and driving around in the fire trucks. And some of us can hear those words and others spoken by our fallen when we are shoveling the snow here at this memorial or when a notice gets toned out over the dispatch channel, striking a last alarm for a brother or sister who has passed in the line of duty. We are blessed to have heard the stories of the calls, the stories about the larger-than-life men and women that came before us and who they all were. And in a way, these stories, they mentor us, and they build and shape us into the firefighters that we become. And these stories are woven into the fabric of this city, and into the traditions that our profession holds so dear. If you look around, there isn't a building or street in this town that doesn't have a firefighter's story associated with it. We have been given the trust of our community. We are welcomed into the homes of strangers. And it is our names and our stories that remain long after an emergency is over. I think this is what makes being a firefighter special. It's that tradition and it's that bond that brought us all together today. It's this tradition and it's this mentorship that makes our brotherhood and sisterhood what it is. Really, it's what makes a firefighter a firefighter from the day they take their oath until the day we sadly lower them into the ground. It's so unique and it only exists in part through the contributions and the commitment that your loved ones being recognized today made the commitment that they made to each other, the commitment they made to this community, and the commitment they made to all of us. The Ottawa Professional Firefighters Association Local 162 would like to say thank you to all of the families and friends of our fallen. Thank you 
thank you so much for sharing and entrusting your loved ones with us and with this community. Please know that their names and the impact that they have made will live on through the stories that we share around the kitchen table. It'll be, their names and stories will be shared in fire stations from Canada to Orleans and with the next generation of new firefighters to come who in the tradition of the fire service will follow bravely in those footsteps laid down by your loved ones. Thank you very much. I'd like to call upon Reverend John Bridges. Thirty years ago, that's when I remember it happened. I finally grew up. Now you have to understand that from about age five to about age 20, all I ever said when people asked me, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I want to be a firefighter. It took me to 34 and I had to be ordained in the Anglican Church in order to do it. But these strange men came into my life and it was a group of men at that time from the Union and they wanted to tell me a story and they wanted to invite me into their narrative. What was their narrative? Would you like to be the chaplain to the Ottawa Fire Department? What a gift. I had no idea. No idea at the time. But I've learned over the last 30 years, firefighters, the men and women of the Ottawa Fire Service, are weird. <laughs> they are absolutely amazing and they are a gift. And they're part of my story now, they're part of my narrative about how I've lived my life and how I'm connected to my grandchildren and how I'm connected to the people around me in my neighborhood. But I need to say thank you to all the members of the families of the fallen because you've invited us in and made your loved ones part of our narrative. But today is more than just telling stories and hearing about the goodness of these men and women. Today, today is about corporate memory, our city's memory. How important it is for us to know that part of our story is the sacrifice of other people. First responders are obvious. But when it comes to all the services of the city of Ottawa, we need to be reminded that our health and safety is dependent upon a sacrifice of one form or another. For 30 years I've come to understand that firefighters are a gift. A gift that needs to be cherished, sometimes controlled, but always loved. So to you who have lost loved ones this year and in years gone by, Please know that your city and the corporate identity of our community values their sacrifice. And if you do that, we become a better, more caring, more concerned group of people. And the funny thing about that, the one thing I learned from firefighters over the last 30 years is how much they care deeply about the community that they serve. Amen. carried by Deputy Chief Maschke, representing all firefighters killed in the line of duty.
the legacy of Courage Helmet, representing all firefighters lost in the last year, is has been put on the table by retired Lieutenant Ken Roy. come from all walks of life, united in their courage and selflessness. We honor their years of dedication and service to our community. These are the line of duty deaths since our last ceremony. The third helmet represents all firefighters and is being carried by Ottawa Fire Services Public Information Officer Nick DeFazio. Donc, Valérie Pompier vient d'être différents milieux. Ils sont tous unis par leur courage et leur grand dévouement à notre communauté.
John Leslie McBride was born in Ottawa, went to Champlain High School, later Algonquin College. He enjoyed sports, played hockey and football. Les was a dedicated firefighter who enjoyed teamwork and the, uh, and the camaraderie of the Ottawa Fire Services. He lived every day to the fullest. His laugh was large, larger than life, and extremely contagious. He had a passion for golf, so much so that he started a business as a certified custom golf club fitter. He was a devoted husband to Catherine and a loving father to Jacob and would be pleased to that his loved ones play golf also. Captain Charles Edward Brown. In school, Charlie was always sports-minded, especially with respect to running, wrestling, and football. At a young age, he became involved with his neighbor's stock car racing team, and his love of racing never faded. He actually drove a sportsman race car himself during the 70s. He joined the fire department in 1970 and served for 33 years. During that time, he built many lifelong friends to the firefighter brotherhood and sisterhood. He will be dearly missed by Darlene, his wife of 51 years, his children, Tracy and Robin, and grandchildren, Keegan, Nathan, Xander, and Nash. Platoon Chief Timothy E. Horton, known as Tim, Tim was the treasured son of Aldine Britton and Edward Orton and the much-loved brother of Robin, Rick, and Toby. He joined the fire department in 1983 and displayed great ability and leadership and rising to the rank of platoon chief. He retired in 2020 on the same day as his best friend, platoon chief Scott McLennan. They had started drill school at the same time and their story of career and friendship was featured on CTV News. Tim was known for his caring ways and contagious smile. He leaves behind his beloved wife, Savannah, and beautiful children, Alexander and Christina. Yes. Special music now by Fire Services Band and the Pipe Band, Bonnie Black Isle. Legacy of Courage names, Andre Roy, December 26, 2021.
Legacy of Courage, Andre Roy, December 26, 2021. Captain Steve Hellman, September 5th, or sorry, Firefighter Brian Smith, October 26, 2022. Firefighter Brian Smith, August 26, 2022. Captain Steve Ellman, September 5th, 2022. Captain Peter Raymond, September 15, 2022. Prevention Officer John Verney, October 1st, 2022. Captain Lauren Waters, October 31st, 2022. Firefighter Ken Harrison, December 22nd, 2022. Deputy Chief Gary Clark, January 21st, 2023. District Chief Bruce Foster, February 1st, 2023.
Kim Scheel, February 12, 2023. Firefighter David Dakers, February 18th, 2023. Captain Jim Scrivens, February 28, 2023. Firefighter Terry Kelly, March 9th, 2023. Platoon Chief Stuart Dunning, April 20th, 2023. Platoon Chief Tom Blondin, April 21st, 2023. Fire Chief Gerald Casey, May 25th, 2023. District Chief Alan Brownlee, June 22nd, 2023.
Fire Prevention Officer Glenn Fleck, June 25th, 2023. To honor those who have left us, Dawson McVeter will play the large player by solo saxophone. Pour rendre hommage au pompier mort, Dawson McVeter va jouer un solo de la prière du Seigneur au saxophone. Now, Bugler Tom LaSalle, Ottawa Fire Service Brass Band, and Piper Ross Davidson, Ottawa Fire Service Pipe and Drum Band.
I would ask Reverend John Bridges if you could close in prayer, please. You may be seated. Today we have gathered, we have remembered, may their sacrifice, may their legacy stay with us and help us to transform more and more our communities into a place of love. We ask this in the name that is above all names, whatever you call God. May we find blessing in His world. Amen. We will now have the march past as Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez demeurer à vos places pour le salut d'honneur par le chef Paul Hutt.
This concludes the 22nd Annual Ottawa Firefighters Memorial Service. Please feel free to have refreshments with us and come up and say, listen to a close movement of the band and the pipe band playing together, Highland Cathedral. Come and enjoy. Captain John Leslie McBride. He had a line of duty death due to work-related pancreatic cancer. His date of birth, April 7, 1958. Date of death, October 15, 2020. His fire service time was 1982 to 2015. John, normally called Les, was born in Ottawa and went to Champlain High School and later Algonquin College. He enjoyed sports and played hockey and football. Les was a dedicated firefighter who enjoyed teamwork and the camaraderie of Ottawa Fire. He lived every day to the fullest and his laugh was larger than life and extremely contagious. He had a passion for golf, so much so 
that he started a business as a certified custom golf club fitter. He was a devoted husband to Catherine and a loving father to Jacob. He would be pleased with his love of golf is being carried on by his son, Jake. Captain Charles Edward Brown. Line of duty death due to work-related cancer. Date of birth, March 9th, 1948. Date of death, February 21st, 2022. Fire service from 1970 to 2003. In school, Charlie was always sports-minded, especially with respect to running, wrestling, and football. At a young age, he became involved with his neighbor's stock car racing team, and his love of racing never faded. He actually drove a sportsman race car himself during the 1970s. He joined the fire department in 1970 and served for 33 years. During that time, he built many lifelong friends through the Firefighter Brotherhood. He will be dearly missed by Darlene, his wife of 51 years, his children Tracy and Robin, and grandchildren Keegan, Nathan, Alexander, and Nash. Platoon Chief Timothy E. Orton. Date of birth, June 29, 1960. Date of death, September 1, 2022. Fire service from 1983 to 2020. Tim joined the fire department in 1983 and displayed great ability and leadership in rising to the rank of platoon chief. Tim also loved being a snare drummer with the Ottawa Fire Service Band. Tim, along with his best friend Scott McLennan, started drill school together and remained friends throughout their careers even to the point of retiring on the same day in 2020. Tim was known for his caring ways and contagious smile. He leaves behind his beloved wife, Sylvana, and beautiful children, Alexander and Christina. Firefighter Andre Paul Roy. Date of birth, April 1st, 1931. Date of death, December 26th, 2021. Fire service from 1961 to 1991. Andy joined the Vanier Fire Department in 1961. In 1985, the Vanier Fire Department amalgamated with Ottawa, and Andy became a firefighter with the City of Ottawa. Towards the end of his career, he worked in the Ottawa Fire Maintenance Division, where he was known to be a gentle person and a friendly colleague. Andy was predeceased by his wife, Lorette, who died in 2002. He will be dearly missed by his children, Danielle, Jose, Ivan, and Dominique, and by his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Firefighter Brian David Smith. Date of birth, July 22, 1956. Date of death, August 26, 2022. Fire service, 1977 to 2009. Brian was born in Kingston, Ontario, and moved to Ottawa with his family at the age of three. As a child, he traveled extensively with his parents across Canada and the U.S. Later, he joined the Air Cadets and played football in high school. Brian joined Ottawa Fire in 1977 and enjoyed a 32-year career serving the community. He was somewhat famous in the fire station for his love of Coca-Cola. When others had a coffee break, he would drink a Coke. Brian was the loving husband of Sheila Ann and the proud father of Sheena, Rebecca, Quinton, and Morgan. He was able to be part of his first grandchild's life, Lila, and would have been beaming with excitement awaiting the arrival of his second grandchild this Christmas. Captain Steve Hellman, date of birth, November 9th, 1938, date of death, September 5th, 2022, Fire service from 1960 to 1998. My name is Jeff Hellman, the son of Captain Steve Hellman of the Ottawa Fire Department. My father was my rock, my strength, my hero. His character and strength, both on the job and as a father, I can only live up to in my prayers. He was a great man. 
He was involved in the fire department since 1960, retired in 1998. He uh, left a, a wife, a, a daughter, and myself. He was in, had a hand in the, with the Ottawa Fire Department Band, bringing the Ottawa Senators to Ottawa back in the day when they first joined the NHL. As my grandfather, great-grandfather was an Ottawa Senator, his father. So he was a great man. I love him. I miss him. I can only wish I could make him proud. Captain Peter G. Raymond, date of birth, October 26, 1931, date of death, September 15, 2022, fire service from 1956 to 1991. Peter was born in Ottawa and as a young man joined the Canadian Navy to travel the seas of the world. After serving in the Korean War, he joined the Ottawa Fire Department on June 5, 1956. He enjoyed a 35-year firefighting career, retiring at the rank of captain. An avid sports and fitness person, Peter enjoyed pretty well all sports, but kayaking, sailing, and softball were his favorites. Peter was the loving husband of Eileen for 67 years and the devoted father of Stephen, Bruce, Deborah, and Lori. He was cherished by his nine grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. John Verney, Chief Fire Prevention Officer in Nepean. Date of birth, November 10th, 1943. Date of death, October 1st, 2022. Fire Service, 1962 to 1997. John Verney was large in both life and stature. He commenced his career with Nepean Fire in 1962 and soon discovered a keen interest in prevention of fires. Eventually, he was promoted to the position of Nepean's Chief Fire Prevention Officer. Two of his favorite off-duty pastimes were deer hunting with the lads and providing volunteer support to the carp fair. He also loved playing Santa Claus for the kiddies of family and friends. John was a beloved husband of Nora and the loving father of Joanne and the late Lisa. He was also the proud papa of Paige, Dylan, and Connor. Captain Lorne Waters. Date of birth, November 9th, 1932. Date of death, October 31st, 2022. Fire service from 1957 to 1992. Lorne was born in Ottawa and lived in the village, a place he was proud to be part of. He enjoyed playing sports in local parks and rinks and developed into a very good hockey player. He later played for two OHL teams and eventually was signed by the Boston Bruins. Upon completing his professional hockey career, Lorne joined Ottawa Fire in 1957. He was very proud of his 35-year firefighting career serving the citizens of Ottawa. Lorne was the beloved husband of the late Mary Joan Corbin and the devoted and loving father of Lorne and Donna Marie. He also was the proud grandfather of Everett, Aaron Rose, and Declan Flanagan. Firefighter Kenneth E. Harrison, date of birth July 9th, 1932, date of death December 22nd, 2022, fire service 1954 to 1989. Ken joined the fire department in 1954 and spent 35 years serving the public as a dedicated and well-respected firefighter. He loved all sports but had a particular passion for hockey. It brought him much joy to go to the games where his grandsons and great-grandson would be playing. He loved the simple things in life such as tending his lawn and gardens, being at the lake, spending family time in Florida, or an occasional visit to the casino. Ken felt blessed to be married to his cherished late wife, Greta, and together they built a wonderful life and family. He will be missed greatly by his daughters, Heather and Brenda, his grandchildren, Ashley, Cameron, and Bradley, and his great-grandchildren, Hudson, Charlotte, Addison, and Haven. Deputy Fire Chief Gary Clark, date of birth, April 24, 1938. Date of death, January 21st, 2023. Fire service, 1958 
1998. Gary was a hard-working and well-respected firefighter who touched the lives of many with his kind smile and caring ways. Gary rose through the ranks to become Ottawa's deputy fire chief. Along the way, he spent many volunteer hours restoring antique fire trucks with the Bytown Fire Brigade. With his wife Joan and daughters, he enjoyed traveling throughout Canada and the U.S. Later, he and Joan visited many exotic locations and countries. His interests including curling, square dancing, reading, games, and puzzles. He was a devoted husband of Joan, the loving father of Karen, Catherine, and the cherished papa of Trevor, Robert, Chelsea, and Kayla. He was also father-in-law to Rofa member David Thompson and uncle to Rofa member Brian Clark. District Chief Bruce Foster. Date of birth, March 2nd, 1943. Date of death, February 1st, 2023. Fire service from 1967 to 2002. Bruce joined the fire department in 1967 and spent 35 years as a very competent and well-liked firefighter. Throughout his career, he displayed his giving nature both at work and in retirement as a relentless volunteer. Always prepared to help others, he supported countless charities and causes, including Salvation Army, the Fire Emergency Support Canteen, Muscular Dystrophy, the Chio Duck Race, the Chio Burn Unit, and the Chio Telethon, and more. He was the loving husband of Bonnie, proud father of Bruce Jr., and the stepfather of Sean and Corina. Also, the cherished boo-boo of Owen and Cole. Firefighter Kim Shield. Date of birth, July 18, 1954. Date of death, February 12, 2023. Fire service, 1972 to 2014. Kim had a vast number of opportunities in his career within the fire service. Kim commenced working in the March Township Fire Department as a volunteer in 1972. Shortly thereafter, he joined the Canada Fire Department as a full-time firefighter and also took on the role as president of the Canada Professional Firefighters Association for some of those years. Prior to amalgamation, because of Kim's officer experience, work ethic, and respect for others, was promoted to the position of Deputy Fire Chief within the Canada Fire Department. After amalgamation, he resumed his role as a full-time firefighter within the Ottawa Fire Services and enjoyed every minute until his retirement in 2014. With his wife Joanne, Kim raised three children, Grady, Gavin, and Nikaida. During his retirement, he continually dabbled at turning his property into a very large playground so he could spend precious time with his six grandchildren. Whenever he had the opportunity, Kim would take comfort being with his family, which included hunting and snowmobiling with his boys. Firefighter David Allen Dakers. Date of birth, October 22, 1954. Date of death, February 18, 2023. Fire service from 1980 to 2013. David was born and raised in Ottawa, growing up in the Alta Vista Riverview Park area, where street hockey and football were the games of choice. In 1980, he joined Ottawa Fire and served the public for 33 years. In 1991, he rescued a three-year-old girl and her mother from a high-rise fire. He was later presented with the City of Ottawa Bravery Award. Dakes will be fondly remembered as a charming man with a smile that made you feel like you were just welcomed home. His kind heart and loving soul touched many people around him. He was the loving father of Abby and her incredible husband, Eric. He was also the cherished grandfather of his beautiful grandsons and best buddies, Killian and Lachlan. Captain James Scrivens. Date of birth, August 20th, 1941. Date of death, February 28, 2023. Fire service, 1966 to 1997. 
Jim commenced work at the Nepean Fire Department and retired as a captain. His infectious smile was always welcomed by his friends and fellow workers. He was a master at practical jokes, but his greatest passion was music. He considered it a great triumph to be able to raise a family of musicians. Jim's summer happy place was the campground at Ferguson Lake, where he could chill and relax. In wintertime, he and his wife, Jackie, loved to spend time on the beach at Holiday, Florida. Jim has joined the great jam session in the sky and would be lovingly remembered by his soulmate Jacqueline of 59 years, his daughter Lorena, and his grandsons Levin and Corbin. Fire Chief Terry Kelly. Date of birth, January 12, 1936. Date of death, March 9, 2023. Fire service from 1972 to 2014. Terry was born in Ottawa, attended Nepean High, and earned a degree in mining and engineering from Michigan Tech. In the 60s, he worked with NORAD on the early warning radar network and later in Montreal with Expo 67. He and his family finally settled in CARP. He proudly served the public for 42 years as a volunteer firefighter, where he held various ranks, including Fire Chief of West Carleton. Terry was also a keen volunteer in the community and was recognized in 2012 with the Order of Ottawa Award. Terry was a loving husband of Margot for 60 years and the cherished father of Mark and Shauna. He was also the proud grandfather of Jacob. Platoon Chief Stuart King Dunning. Date of birth, April 20, 1943. Date of death, April 20, 2023. Fire service from 1961 to 2003. Stu joined the fire department in 1961 and was extremely proud of his more than 40 years with the Ottawa Fire Service. During that time, he rose through the departmental levels and retired at the rank of platoon chief. Stu and wife Donna were well known among the boaters on the Rita Canal system after spending almost 30 summers on their floating cottage backdraft. They loved to navigate the canal, various Rideau Lakes and Thousand Islands. All who knew and loved Stu will miss his booming voice, sense of humor, dancing skills and outgoing personality. Stu was predeceased by Donna Gale, his high school sweetheart and wife of 50 years. He is survived by his sons Jason and Stephen. Deputy Fire Chief Thomas L. Blunden Date of birth, April 21, 1944. Date of death, April 21, 2023. Fire service from 1965 to 2001. Tom found immense fulfillment in his 40 years as a dedicated, well-respected firefighter. At the time of his retirement, he had risen to the level of Deputy Fire Chief. Tom passed down a very special motto to his family. It reads, We will never forget to welcome strangers as honored guests. Keep our word once it is given, and indulge those we love with all that we have to give. Tom is survived by Arlene, his high school sweetheart and wife, and his children Amanda and his son TJ, who follows in his father's footsteps as an Ottawa firefighter. He will also be missed by his cherished grandchildren, Pamela, Joseph, Ella, and Thomas, along with great-granddaughter, Violet. Collectively, they were all his pride and joy. Platoon Chief Gerald Casey. Date of birth, February 8, 1950. Date of death, May 25, 2023. Fire service, 1969 to 2004. Gerald, affectionately known as Jerry, spent much of his life on or near his family farm, working with his father and brothers. In 1969, he joined the Nepean Fire Department, where he served the public for 35 years, rising through the ranks to the level of platoon chief. One of his biggest joys was spending summers at the family cottage near Carlton Place. In 2014, Jerry built a beautiful 
retirement home on this property for his family. During the winter, Jerry and his wife Terry spent time in beautiful Barefoot Bay in Florida. Jerry was a devoted husband of Terry, the loving father of Gregory, Lisa, and Michael, and the proud grandpa of seven grandchildren. District Chief Alan Brownlee, date of birth, October 23, 1943, date of death, June 21, 2023, fire service from 1965 to 2002. Alan was born in Ottawa to a firefighting family. He was the brother of the late Ottawa Fire Service member Des and the late Nepean Fire member Clayton. He was also uncle to Ottawa Fire Service members Gary and Wayne, and as well a cousin of the late Nepean Fire Fighter Keith. After a 37-year career at Ottawa Fire, Allen retired as District Chief and retired to his favorite place, a home he had built along the Ottawa River in Constance Bay. He was the beloved husband of Denise, the loving father of Stephanie and Julie, and the proud grandpa of Sarah, Ryan, and Lauren. Fire Prevention Officer Glenn Fleck. Date of birth, January 25th, 1937. Date of death, June 25th, 2023. Fire Service, 1968 to 1997. Glenn, known as Grandpa, worked in the Nepean Fire Department from 1968 to 1997. In most of Glenn's career, he provided services to the community of Nepean through the Fire Prevention Bureau. His passion for the fire service extended into his family. Rodney, his son, retired as a platoon chief for the Ottawa Fire Services, and his grandson, Stephen, is currently working on the fire rigs within the Ottawa Fire Services. Glenn was predeceased by his lovely wife, Carol. The two of them raised Rod and his sister, Linda, who in turn gave Grandpa and Carol six grandchildren, which provided Glenn much joy in those later years. In his earlier years, Glenn was passionate about sports and coaching, which included water sports such as water skiing, Glenn had two passions in his life, an active supporter of the Ottawa 67s, and he took solace and comfort from the church. Thank you.